be. This is a good thing I did buy some today. Hey Arlene, how are you? Hi Patty. Hi, Softpaw. Softpaw, how are you? Kim. I'm tired. I've been falling asleep in my chair over here. My grandbaby wore me out. <laughs> Hi, Elaine, how are you? So I guess the bus is unloading people now. All right, so um, we got 11 people in here so far, so I guess we can get started. Uh, so some of the things that I've been doing today is I made, I was straightening up some stuff and I found some wooden appliques that uh, I've had for probably five or six years. I remember we bought these from Michael's um, and I was going to make drop spindles out of them and they just sat in a drawer somewhere and I never did anything with them. So I found these uh, yesterday and I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and make some drop spindles. So 
when we went to um Lowe's, I picked up a dial rod and I cut it using my pruning shears in four pieces and I filed the edges so that they wouldn't be um stabby and sharp. And they spin pretty darn good. These things spin really well. This one isn't quite as balanced as I want it to be. I probably put a grommet over the top of it. But um they they're pretty stable and they spin spin really good. So so I had four of those, so I made four spindles. So that's something you can do. It only took like um 15 20 minutes to do. You drill the hole uh big enough for your dial rod, and this is an oak dial rod I'm using. Um, uh, because the oak is a harder wood than those those real cheap. I don't know why they make those real cheap one out of this was like 97 cents for the dial rod um these are pleaks i know i got these for like a dollar each because they were like on the, in the bargain bin i remember that they were like a dollar each so you can make it and, and then the, the cup hooks were 90 some cent a dollar like maybe maybe a dollar 13. maybe a dollar 13 with um with change, you know, night night, night night, night night. night. <laughs> the grandbaby came by to say good night. Yeah, and um, so you can make a nice drop spindle very cheaply. Total, this drop spindle probably cost me three bucks total for materials, and that was like you know, all of them really um less than three bucks and you can have a nice drop spindle that's very well balanced it's light as you can see you can spin really pretty thin on it so yeah and then of course you can always use a old cd as well <laughs> now the other thing i was going to show you guys tonight is some of you guys like doing watercolors and stuff. My daughter, she loves doing watercolors. And um, I dabble. But you could use an Altoids tin to make your own limited palette for like when you're going to go traveling or something. You don't want to take your your big tin with you. You just want something that will fit in your purse. So you could take an Altoids tin and make you a watercolor palette with some half pans. Um, I got a bag of these half pans off Amazon. I think there was like 50 in the bag. And it was only like, I think, four or five bucks. And so you just need some double-sided tape and an empty Altoids tin. It doesn't have to be an Altoids tin. It could be whatever little decorative tin you have. <clears throat> and then you just want to cut. I got my scissors. I know it's kind of blown out. I can't, it's, it's dark outside and I can't quite get the lighting in here right. But um, you just want to kind of measure out how much tape you're going to need. It's going to be two pieces for this. It's going to be two pieces of tape. So this is my daughter. She loves, <clears throat> she loves, she's loves using watercolors. I figure I'd do some empty tins for her and um i can get this piece of paper off yeah let me stick this down there first and then maybe i can get it off it's not too long okay I don't have fingernails, good fingernails. My fingernails are soft, so it's hard for me to peel this stuff off. I will not be defeated by a piece of double-sided tape. <laughs> oh. I have to call my husband. He has beautiful fingernails.
I need marriage pillar thingy. Yeah, I do. All right, got it. Okay, so we got it off. So once you get your double-sided tape in there, I think this is a Gorilla Glue one. You just take your half pans and you just stick them down. You make sure you get close to the the wall over there because you're going to be putting another one down in there. So you just stick them down on that glue and then you can fill them with your favorite watercolor paint and you have a portable cheap um, watercolor palette. And this is like one, two, three, four, five. So you have 10 colors. <clears throat> just make sure you put your primary colors in there as well and then you have all the colors All right, so if I pull it from the side, there we go. Stuff is really sticky. All right, so got it started. And you just fight with your double sided tape, <clears throat> but don't let it defeat you. Okay, and there you go. You have a um, quick and easy to use and portable palette with you could put 10 colors in there. You could use it for like some special colors you might have. Um, some samples people sometimes people send you samples like if you got one of those um sketch boxes or something like that and then you can make your little palettes with the little samples they send you as well so i have <clears throat> i know my daughter likes to have a kit with like her skin colors and stuff in it and um she'll have like her kits a kit with like her blues so when she wants to do like monochromatic stuff I also use Alto Tins to store um, stitch markers, needles, um, bobby pins, not bobby pins, um, safety pins, little odds and ends, knit things that I might have with my knitting. 
I'll keep it in a tin. I can just throw in my craft bag. And so, like, this is a key for my um, my son in law's blonde hair. The key that I use when I'm tightening my uh, needles on my interchangeable uh, needle kit. You this goes into the end of the needle and you can tighten it that way. Um, paper clip, anything you want to keep in there, um, just little odds and ends so you'll have them. And this is another thing you could use some of your outdoor tents for. So, and the other thing is, like if I'm going somewhere and I'm using, I'll need to dump out my pencil um, shavings. I use, I keep one of these in my bags when we go somewhere if we're gonna be drawing and stuff. And then I could just empty my sharpener into this until I can get home. And then I can dump it out in a trash can. So that's another thing that I use to empty out to tins for. Um, and that's what I want to share with you guys tonight. Like some of the little odds and ends things that I do to recycle or upcycle uh <laughs> out to tins uh so they don't end up you know in the landfills there's um there are people who take these and like my daughter she's a um she she does the clay art and um there are people who take these and they make little um dioramas on the inside of them with clay or paper things like that and um so you give them to a child and they open them up and it's like this little mini doll house inside of the inside of the um tin. And um some of them make like a crochet a little tiny teddy bear and put in there and they'll make like a little bed for it and everything. Um they'll make like a window over here so that it, they'll cut out they cut the tin and make like a little um they'll glue a piece of um clear plastic on the side so that as you can look inside the tin at, at the scene inside the tin um i've seen people who, who put like little paintings on the inside of the tins so they have a lot of uh interesting things you can use them for but But they're, they're nice little tins. They're a nice, perfect size. Just throw it in your purse and stuff. So there's, there are people who sell them on eBay as well, I've seen. And they're selling them and people buy them. So, um, so there are a lot of people who do crafts with these little tins. So I hope all you guys had like a good Christmas. This was my grand's second Christmas. This is but this one she actually participated in. So she didn't want to open her paper and stuff, so we had to open the stuff for her. And so we're getting ready to get into January. So it's um almost time to get ready to start plants if you have a greenhouse or if you have a designated um area in your house where you start your plant set so go ahead because before you know it you know those 12 weeks will be gone by and it'll be spring so i have tons of seeds that i need to start and i have to plan my garden out um, I did a couple of videos. I just haven't put them up yet. Um, where we're starting to get the garden ready. I have to order from the um, a local guy. I need to order some 
mushroom soil and uh, mush mushroom compost and some garden compost and mix those up and then get some wood chips to put down in between my pathways in the garden and yeah so i'm determined i'm going to have a garden this year and uh I've, i think i think i've gotten over losing my garden buddy which was my dog <laughs> I'm ready to get back out there and get my hands dirty. So we we um took down all the banana trees last weekend, except for the pups. The banana pups, we didn't take those down. And uh, so that's two for her. That's the shavings one. Let me see the needle one. What's in here? Nothing. Okay. We have made one more. My my main thing this year with gardening is I'm trying to save some seeds from my dad's house. Um and hopefully they germinate so that we can keep those strains going. Hopefully it hasn't been too long. Some of the seeds are gone. When I thought about it, you know, um, it was too late. You know, some of the seeds were just too far gone as far as completely dried out, um, starting to turn into dust pretty much. Um, so I'm hoping that the ones that I did find at his house I'll be able to get them to germinate and then I can let those plants go to seed. And then next year I'll be ready to, to garden with some of my dad's um, heirloom varieties. Um, I just, I hadn't even thought about it until, you know, this year when uh, I'm like, Oh, I can get some seeds from my from dad. And I was like, you, you don't think about it when your family member has Alzheimer's, all the little teeny things, little details of their life that you're, you're more concerned with trying to make sure they're healthy and stuff. And you don't think about all those little, little things until, you know, it just came to me. Like I can ask dad for some seeds and then it's like, it hits you. He hasn't gardened just as long as it has been since the last time I gardened pretty much before his Alzheimer's got bad. And all those seeds haven't been taken care of and protected like he would have. He would have put them in, in little um, jars or pill bottles and put them in his, he had a refrigerator out in his, um, his little puttering shed. And um, so there's no power to that shed anymore. And it just came to me. So my brother, he helped me find all the seeds and we sat out there on the back of, um, at my sister's house and went through them and I picked out the ones that I thought might be viable still. So we, we've lost some okra strains. We've lost some corn strains. We've lost some um, Christmas pole beans that he had been growing, well, that his family had been growing from seed since way before his time. So these are some varieties that's lost forever now that he used to grow, that his mother grew, that his grandmother grew, and they shared seeds, and they always let some of the plants mature the seeds so that they could collect the seeds from them. So there was some heirloom varieties that was probably 90 years old or more that are gone now because we we weren't thinking about it. We, weren't, we were just thinking about him, keeping him healthy. So, and... Um, but hopefully the ones that I did get, hopefully they'll they'll just stay and we'll be able to get some of those varieties, keep them going, share them with other people. And that way we'll keep them going. So I just made three watercolor palettes for the price of Altoa 10, which 
I use Altoids, so I think they're like what two, two or three dollars. The Altoids, the half pans was like a bag of fifty. I think it was five or six bucks. And so I just got three little mini watercolor palettes that can go anywhere with me or my daughter. Cause I'll probably give them these to her. And um, and there you have it. Um, just some tape. An uh, old Alto a 10 and some half pans. So don't throw your half pans away, guys. Save them. And you can make you a little palette out of them. This one has the, um, the Daniel Smith primaries, like the aquamarine, the red, and the yellow in here. And then I also have some red, some blues, yellows, greens, um, brown from my um from a cheap watercolor set that i had got off of amazon that is very similar to the cotton watercolors and um, so i have that in there too um so yeah anybody got any questions This one is from an uh, Arctic Knitting Podcast. Um, I won a giveaway a couple years ago that she did. And um, she sent me this filled with some little knitting, knickknack stitch markers and stuff like that. And um, I wish I could find some more of these. They're really cute. I know my friend Sarah, she probably she's in Great Britain. She sent me some teas one time that were in this little cute box. And the the market the packaging on the box was actually like a, a knit a, a cloth, like a, some knitting. Like you could see the stitches and stuff for the knitting. That was the packaging on the box. It was one of their collect collector's items. It was really cute. But I'm really stoked about these. They came out a lot better than I thought they would. And um, so I might go back to Michael's and look for some more appliques, different ones besides these, the round one and that, that one. So I might go back and see if I can find some more. But if you're going to make yours, make sure you use a hardwood dial rod. Um, don't get that cheap, real. Like this is the cheap, flimsy dial rod these things snap real easy when you drop them they'll break real easy so but if you get the oak i think they had oak and poplar and they had like another wood at lowe's if you get that one you don't have to worry about the the shaft um breaking it as much as when you unless you step on it or sit on it so All right, and that's it for me. Thanks, guys, for coming by. I really appreciated it. Oh, custom print, custom printed tins. Yeah, I got <laughs> finished these um Christmas stockings. I got <laughs> working on another one. So I'll meet y'all over at the next venue. Or I'll go back to crocheting. Oh, let me see. Okay.